Hey dude, I got your Timbits. Do you mind if I have one? Today's dozen Boston creams just weren't as filled as usual. Uh, thanks bro. Wait, what? A meatball? Ollie, I, I swear I ordered regular Timbits. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, man. What's going on guys? Well here, welcome to the video. This week I decided to trade in all the carbs I love for some cauliflower, eat my body weight in avocados, and try the ketogenic diet. Originally becoming popular throughout the 1920s and 30s as a treatment for epilepsy, but now people today use it mainly for weight loss or to improve their health in some way. So some of the claimed benefits are decreased appetite, stable energy, lower blood sugar and insulin levels, and enhanced cognitive function. The list goes on and on, but let's just jump in to day number one. Typical macro breakdown of the ketogenic diet is 70% fat, 25% uh, protein, and 5% carbs. So my macros this week, yes, I'm gonna be tracking macros this week, are gonna be 233 grams of fat, 187 grams of protein, so a little bit over one gram per pound, and then a whopping 37 grams of carbs. And you guys know me, I'll put absolutely anything in my mouth, but eating all these high fat foods are gonna be quite the adjustment. All right, so meal number one of the week. So we have four whole eggs with one tablespoon of butter. I can't even remember the last time I cooked with butter. Like my mom would never let me do that shit, but anyway, it smells amazing. We have 100 grams of avocado and then 45 grams of feta cheese, so a pretty light meal. Not that much fat for what I need, but I don't like to have a massive meal anyway in the morning. Oh man, I tell you what, this would go perfectly within a bagel. So you may be wondering, Will, what is the difference between keto and a low carb diet? Great question. Well, they're both low carb diets. It's just pretty much the breakdown of the macronutrients. So like I said, keto is 70% fat, 25% protein and 5% carbs. Whereas a low carb diet, you're looking at around 40% protein, 40% fat and 20% carbs. So you get a little bit more carbs. Yeah, you can taste that grass fed butter, natty butter. So on Gymshark cow, that's for sure. So I think my main concern this week is just being full. So again, one of the benefits of the keto diet <clears throat> is just staying satiated all the time. But these meals are so small because fat is so like calorie dense that I'm kind of worried. All right, meal one done, meal one, very good. Gonna wait for her to finish and then we're gonna go to Costco. Lately, I've been dancing on my own so bravely. Steady steps on the ground, hate me, but I ain't never coming down, never coming down. So this grocery haul right here is gonna last me like two to three days. So starting off with the veggies, uh, we've got a ton of spinach, we've got some green peppers, Brussels sprouts, a ton of avocado, and some cauliflower because me and Katie are gonna be making some keto cauliflower mac and cheese. So a general rule of thumb for the vegetables is that you wanna get above ground vegetables, generally a little bit lower in carbs. For the meats, this was a very different experience for me because I usually don't even buy lean meat, I buy extra lean meat. Like the lowest fat meat is what I would typically buy. Uh, so I just got pretty much the fattiest thing they have and I can just Stuff this with cream cheese, bacon wrap it, whatever my heart desires, right? Uh, got some peanut butter, very easy to get fats and calories in. Uh, feta cheese is just one of the best cheeses on the planet. And then I usually buy part skim, like mozzarella, like very low calorie cheese, but just one with the full fat one today. Got some cheddar, hardly nowhere, and some marble. I just confused that there, but cheddar, marble, 10 grams of fat per serving. So that is the grocery haul. I'm gonna head over to my parents' house right now and pick up some lunch. So dinner is served, and this thing right here on this plate is 81 grams of fat. 81 grams of fat, which is insane. So I have nine and a half ounces of chicken thighs, a bunch of tahini, a bunch of feta cheese with some spinach, and then on the side we made that cauliflower mac and cheese, and that ratio of cheese to cauliflower would like kill a freaking lactose intolerant elephant. Oh, cheese just keeps happening in my mouth. Is too much of a good thing a bad thing? Or is too much of a bad thing a good thing? Like, there's a lot of cheese going on in here. It was honestly like we were like cooking a cheat meal, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, I was like looking at my scale, 
weighing out the cheese, and I was like, are you serious? Like, I can have that much? Like, the amount of coconut oil I use, like, I haven't used that much coconut oil in a day since December 1st. Why does it look like That was the day after, no, not November. Wrapping up day number one with the following macros. So 228 grams of fat, so a little bit short on the fat, 184 grams of protein, so again, a little bit short on the protein, and 39 grams of carbs, so a little bit above, like one or two grams above on the carbs. But if you subtract my fiber, I'm at 24 grams of net carbs. So there's a big debate on whether you should track total carbs or net carbs, and by looking online, it just seems like Whatever you wanna do is what you should do. But the main thing that you're looking at is what carbs affect your blood sugar. So to, in order to get your net carbs, you're basically subtracting the total carbs of the day from your fiber and then the sugar alcohols as well. And the net carbs are the only ones that affect your blood sugar. So today has been pretty good overall. I think the only thing that I've noticed immediately is the fact that I have been thirsty all day long. I've been needing to drink water the entire day. Like my mouth feels like the Sahara Desert as we speak. And so I searched online and apparently it's called keto dry mouth. It's just from having a massive increase in fat and a massive decrease in carbs. It's just playing a big toll on your body's dehydration level. So nothing really serious, very, very normal. So overall, good day. See you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Day number two. So it's only been one day into keto and I've already found myself looking at pictures of carbs in an incognito window at 2 a.m. I'm just kidding, but those donut pillows certainly do not help. But I will say though, my head is feeling pretty heavy and my mind is feeling quite light, didn't mean to sound that deep there, but yeah. So I stepped on the scale this morning because I was just burning with curiosity and I was 174.8 pounds, which means I lost four pounds in one day. Obviously that is all water weight. I was expecting to lose weight, just not that much. So that was a little bit concerning because I did drink a lot of water. So sayonara water retention. So the plan right now is to put a coffee together and then go for a beautiful walk. So if you guys have been following me for a long time, you guys would know I absolutely love coffee. I like to drink a black, but today we are gonna try making some bulletproof coffee. Because when I think of keto, I think of avocados and I think of bulletproof coffee. So what goes inside this is obviously coffee with some MCT oil, which stands for medium chain triglycerides, which is a type of fat typically derived from coconut oil, as well as some grass fed butter, which could also be ghee as well. So what this is supposed to do is provide us with long and sustained energy. It's also really good at helping us prevent the keto flu. And what the keto flu is, is when your body is getting rid of all of its stored glucose and starting to switch to using fat for fuel. That can usually happen within the first two to seven days of entering ketosis. Coffee in there. Now, here you add anywhere from one teaspoon to two tablespoons. And what they said online was, if you're not familiar with uh, MCT oil, you're gonna get some insane diarrhea, but I'm just gonna go with one tablespoon and I'm gonna go for a walk. So a walk with MCT oil for the first time. Game on, brother. So we're gonna go with one tablespoon of that, which is 130 calories. This is just going against everything I believe in. Okay, so 50 milliliters of the MCT oil is in. So how the Bulletproof Coffee helps with keto flu is by the MCT oil boosting your ketone levels when your body can't yet produce them on its own. So it kind of gets rid of all like the symptoms of the keto flu, like the dizziness, the fogginess, kind of like the headaches and stuff. So the MCT oil provides your brain with immediate energy. So now we're gonna go in with one tablespoon of, one to two tablespoons of grass-fed butter. Hopefully the Vitamix can handle this. Ooh, okay. Smells like a, a very like elegant latte. Taste test coming in. Hmm, it has like a nuttiness to it that I like. It tastes exactly like an almond milk latte. Very like soothing on the throat. I was kind of scared that it's gonna be like so like buttery and I was gonna be like drinking butter, probably wanna throw up. But it is very nice. A very nice balance from coffee to butter to the MCT oil, which I don't really know what it tastes like. But I'd imagine if you put actual coconut oil in here, it would taste unreal. So I'm gonna take this on my walk and hopefully I don't shit myself. Towards the tail end of my walk right now, so far nothing to report. Always prepared, don't want what happened last summer at the golf course to happen again. But I was looking online, it looks like a lot of celebrities have used the keto diet temporarily or still use it today and have seen a lot of success with it. You know, I've seen Adriana Lima uses it, Vanessa Hudgens, Halle Berry, Kourtney Kardashian's a big proponent of it, Tim Tebow, LeBron James used it temporarily for the off season. So it's pretty cool to see all these celebrities from different fields, from athletes, models to actors, all using it and seeing success. For dinner tonight, we are making some stuffed green peppers. So I have them cut in half right here, about to put them in the oven. I found these sausages from Longo's called Wagyu dinner sausages. And these are them right here, very small. So you know how Greg Doucette has that laser eye vision for body fat? I have laser eye vision for inches. And this looks to be about four and a half, five inches on a good day. And not even any more girth to compensate, which is kind of sad. So per sausage, get ready for this, 230 calories, 20 grams of fat. Oh. 
Dinner done, it was so good, but so heavy. They're like literally one piece of that pepper was all you need. Anything's better stuff with sausage. But now we are making some keto brownies. I'd make them special, but keto's not the most munchy friendly food. So here we have a lot of butter. Like we literally made light work of that butter. It's like pretty much all gone. A ton of cocoa powder and then some stevia mix that I'm gonna let this melt down. And then once this is all melted, we just have to add 70 grams of almond flour and then one whole egg, and that's pretty much the batter. Then we put it into the oven, 350 degrees for 25 minutes, and we'll see how it tastes. Mmm. Just wrapped up my first workout on the keto diet. Wasn't really expecting a whole lot coming into today's session, but I was pleasantly surprised. Usually when you drop your carbs by quite a bit, you will notice an initial decrease in performance, mainly due to the fact that your muscles are so glycogen depleted. But don't get me wrong, this workout wasn't great by any means, but starting with the pros, I was pretty strong today. I hit some good numbers, which I was very happy about. Another one was I was very focused. I had tunnel vision the whole time. And for the cons, you know, it was really hard for me to get a pump. I don't feel pumped at all. And my stamina sucked. Like the first two sets were good. And then after that, I just went downhill very, very fast. So my stamina is matching with my stamina elsewhere. And a lot of people seem to say that you can't build muscle on the keto diet. And that's absolutely false. All you need to build muscle is water to stay hydrated, protein to repair and build the muscle and energy to actually come into the gym and lift the weights. So you don't need carbs. All you need is water, protein, and energy. Hi, can I get two teen burgers, lettuce wraps, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a day. All right, so I am out right now. I'm gonna go pick up some steaks because my boy Tristan is coming over for dinner tonight. But along the way, I wanted to stop and get something to eat. So it seems like fast food places have very keto-friendly options. It just seems like the keto diet's very easily accessible. And when I think about it, when you go out to eat, it's way easier to get a high-fat meal than just to get a high-protein, low-fat meal. So keto, going out to eat, is actually pretty good. So what I got was two Team Burgers lettuce wraps. Because in general, when I'm trying to be healthy, I like to wrap my things in lettuce. But when I'm trying to have fun, I'm not wrapping anything up. So this ratio of lettuce to meat is not ideal. Like, look at this. It's also looks, falling right looks pretty out sad. Yeah. What'd you get? I got a Beyond Meat Burger. I feel bad for having the bun in front of you now. Oh man, Mine that bun, that yeah. bun is like my kink <laughs> right now. I will say, a lettuce wrap burger is a lot like a, a stepdad going in and forcing a hug. It's not the real thing, but it's trying. Don't you think? So it is a little later in the afternoon and I feel horrific like it seems like every ounce of energy i had for the day was utilized in the gym and then after that i am just shocked i can't imagine myself doing anything more for the rest of the day like i just want to sleep and speaking of sleep many people report when they first start keto their sleep suffers they wake up in the middle of the night insomnia and so on but i haven't had that at all i've been sleeping completely normally i guess that's because that's the only time i'm getting some carbs and then i wake up and realize that doesn't donuts was just a dream but luckily coffee and white powders are still keto Take a look at these steaks that I picked up. So these are ribeye steaks from PEI grass fed because we eat natty cows here. So massive, three pounds for these two steaks. And we got Tristan here. He's been keto for how long? Four, four years almost now. Four years and he's pretty much carnivore now. So you pretty much just eat steak, eggs and ground beef. Yeah, pretty much. My meal is just all red meats and stuff. That's insane. But this guy <laughs> actually came prepared. He brought the big cast iron skillet. He brought the salt and tongs. I got tongs too. Like, This guy is so lean, he gets a cooking pump. Let's see it. Like, what the heck? Two men with their meat in front of a camera. Sounds like the beginnings of a college frat initiation ritual to me. 20 ounce pieces of meat to be exact. I don't know about you, but there's something like unsettling about having just a plate of steak with nothing else with it. I think I'm used to it after a while. Yeah, I feel is, like I have it. It just seems like wrong. And as you guys can see, I don't have steak knives yet, but it actually is it's do. quite fitting actually this with pretty this, much yeah so tristan cooked this steak i'm gonna get a little taste test here so that's pretty good firm that's with a little good. give yep that's medium rare anything more give it to the dogs <laughs> oh man that's perfect mm -hmm. you nailed it man i've had bear before really mm -hmm. it's a bit swampy tasting mm. i've always been a prairie animal man will's like almost done i still have so much i'm a small bite kind of guy I savor it yeah, we're not, we're not meant to be friends then. I guess not. Yeah. Good morning guys, day number six. I actually feel pretty good today. Probably the best I've felt all week, even though it's only 9.40 in the morning and I feel very light and thin. Like everyone at the gym yesterday was like, Will, your face slimmed down quite a bit. And speaking of yesterday, yesterday was a shit show. I was lightheaded, I was dizzy, I just, I was snappy. If you said hi to me, I'd be like, you wanna fight? And to top it all off, 
I shattered my phone. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that was just like the nice cherry on top. But one thing that was interesting was it was very hard for me to get my calories in yesterday. And rarely do I ever need to play catch up at the end of the night. But after dinner, I had like 800 calories to eat. So I don't know if it's like the fats keeping me full or without carbs, I'm simply losing the will to eat. But hopefully today is better. So right now I am making my pre-workout meal and that is gonna consist of just the beef from this meal prep meal uh, with a bunch of cheese. Gonna add in a full avocado and then five eggs. So these are the only eggs I have left from that big grocery haul at the beginning of the week. With some coconut oil into the pan, making like a keto mashed potatoes. Hold the potatoes. So earlier this week, we talked about the Bulletproof Coffee helping with the keto flu, but also what you wanna do when you're starting keto is monitor your electrolytes. Because when you're reducing your carbs and flushing out so much water, you are losing a lot of electrolytes, like your sodium, potassium, magnesium. So what I have been doing is using this thing here called Keto Energy has all of that stuff in it. So I've been mixing it with my pre-workout 30 minutes before the workout and I think it's been helping or at least reducing the symptoms of the keto flu. So highly recommend if you're gonna try this to get a supplement with your electrolytes. So the plan today is to go to the gym after this. Then I'm gonna go and pick up some keto snacks or a keto snack taste test tonight. And I'm actually gonna try ordering a keto pizza. So that'll be pretty interesting. Okay, so just wrapped up my workout and it was terrible. All my weights dropped, lost a ton of reps, couldn't get a sweat. So like my workouts the past couple of days have been like over an hour and a half and typically I do them within an hour. So workouts have been terrible and I took a naughty amount of pre today. So I am starving, gonna go to the low carb grocery and pick up some keto snacks and go home and do the little taste test. Okay, so I am here with Victoria right now. We have four keto snacks that we are gonna taste for you guys and give them a quick rapid fire rating out of five. Let's go with the donut. The donut, okay. Yeah. It smells donutty. Does it? it? Smells very donutty. It just smells very mapley to me. I don't know about donutty. It's chalky. I feel like I'm chewing on like chalk at school. I never did that before. That was your thing. Well, I was hoping this was gonna fulfill the void I have right now on my six day donut hiatus. And it's just not doing it at all. Like it tastes like, it tastes very fibrous. It tastes like I'm doing something good for my body. And when you eat donuts, you don't want to do that. You want to feel gluttonous. It is very dense though. Out of five, two to five. I agree. You want to go with the chocolate chip cookie? These cookies are so fruit? cute. Do you like it hard or soft? Soft. Soft? I like a chewy one. Chewy cookie's my jam. Not very sweet. At all. It has a cakiness to it. I'm gonna give it again a two out of five. I'm being harsh today. I like have three and a half. I three think it's half. really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, now I want to do just the cheese. Cheese and jalapenos. Oh, wow. The cheese is very well expressed. And it's spicy a little bit. It's good. Yeah, like the jalapeno is having a little flirtatiousness with my tongue. It has a little zing to it. Five out of five. Five out of five? Yeah, man. That's good. I'm going to go with a four out of five. Next up, we're going with Lily's chocolate bar. Salted almond. Love a salty nut. It has a saltiness I'm partial to. The nut. It's really good. Is really coming through. It's a very pronounced nut. Oh man. I'm gonna give this a five out of five. Really? All right, so per slice, you're looking at 180 calories, 12 fat, seven carbs, five of that is fiber, so two net carbs per slice and 11 grams of protein. And the crust is made out of coconut flour, eggs, pumpkin seed flour, psyllium husk, flax meal, coconut milk, ground chia and herbs. Very, very cheese forward. There's a lot of cheese on here. The cheese to crust ratio is definitely keto, I'd say that. And I'm just gonna turn it around and nail it from the backside because I feel like the crust is definitely gonna be the star of the show here. It's a bit dry. There's definitely layers to this crust that you don't typically get from a normal za. A little bit of a spongy consistency. I think that's where the egg whites are coming in, but it's very, very cheesy. Like, there's definitely not the right amount of sauce that I desire here. So unfortunately, I can only eat half of this pizza. I'd recommend trying it, especially if you're keto and you want pizza. I'd say it's a pretty good option. So today is shoulder day. I always start off with a standing press. So last week I did four sets of six with 185 pounds. So this week I have a five by five planned. I want to hit 190 pounds, but I don't know how that's going to go because I've been warming up and I just don't have that power off the chest that I normally do have. But I rarely come to the gym with no motivation to train, but the past couple workouts have been tough. Like I just, I just can't get in the zone. I can't get a sweat on. I have no pump, but usually it's all mind over matter. So this might be a lot harder than it should be, but we're gonna get it done. Just about 
four o'clock right now and I'm only on to my second meal of the day. So I've been going to Chipotle a lot. It's been like my go-to this week. It's like the fourth time I've been here. Some great keto options. So I've been getting a salad bowl, no vinaigrette, double barracoa, guac, cheese, and sour cream. Doesn't look like the best bowl, but really tasty. The last meal of the keto week, we are gonna be using the air fryer that I have not used in like a couple years, but we found a recipe on Pinterest that looked pretty sick, and that is some Parmesan crusted salmon. So we got a couple salmon fillets here, and what we gotta do is mix together some mayo, Dijon mustard, Parmesan cheese, and some lemon juice, so we can make a nice little like kind of paste, and then you kind of spread it on top of the salmon fillets, and then it goes into the air fryer for around 20 minutes and gets out nice and golden brown. So if it turns out well, I'll link it in the description for you guys to try it out. So here's what they're looking like before. So let's see what they look like after. And here's what they're looking like after. Ooh, damn, that looks good. Now that was phenomenal, very lemony, highly recommend it, it will be linked in the description. Okay, so time for the last thing we are gonna be eating for the whole entire keto week. It's my little reward for making it the whole entire week. Go in keto, and that is some keto donuts. They look a little bit cakey, but hey, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. Let's do it, it smells like a hybrid of a French toast and pancake. I'm just gonna dink it in. Oh, it absorbs that coffee so well. Okay, so one week of keto is in the books, and what a week, what a week. That was a nice up and down roller coaster. So I stepped on the scale this morning, and I was 170.6 pounds. Yes, you heard that correctly. I was 170.6 pounds, which means I lost 8.2 pounds in one week. Well, dude, that is not all body fat, guys. I know that is mostly water, but regardless of what it is, 8.2 pounds in one week is a lot of weight to lose. And when you look at the before and after photo, I actually look like I put on some body fat in the after photo. I actually don't look that good at all. That is mostly due to the fact that I am so depleted and my muscles kind of like shriveled up like a raisin giving you a higher body fat appearance. But I'm gonna jump right into the pros that I found this week. And the first thing is, the food is just tasty. Like fat tastes good and it was satisfying. The meals are not big, but they keep you full for a very long time. Like I would have my breakfast around like 9, 30, 10 o'clock and I am good until like three, four in the afternoon, which is pretty damn sick. The next thing was the focus was incredible. When I'm sitting down doing my editing, I just feel like I'm one with my laptop. I'm just getting the tunnel vision, feeling sharp and alert and it's just awesome. Very, very productive. Another thing was the energy, specifically after a meal. You might notice if you have a high carb meal, you feel lethargic when you go lie down, but you feel the exact same before the meal as you do after the meal, which is really good. You feel energized the whole entire day. So now for the cons. The main con for me was variety. I don't like to feel restricted in any way, and I like to eat lots of fruits. I like to eat lots of vegetables, and when I can't do that, I just, I just don't like it. The next thing was snacking was difficult for me, because especially when I want a snack, I want something fresh. I like my protein ice cream with lots of berries in it. It's just nice, cold, and refreshing, and I don't really want to snack on a piece of cheese or a block of cheese. That's just not a good snack for me. So I just felt like it's very hard to snack. And the last con is I find it very hard to accurately track your calories on this diet. Not that you can really accurately track your calories at all because most food labels are pretty much off. But when you're eating a lot of steak, ground meat, just different cuts of meat, the fat content can vary dramatically and that can set your calories off quite a bit. And I think that influenced my weight a lot because I had a lot of steak. Like for example, one uh, eight ounce ribeye could be 800 calories, but then the next eight ounce ribeye you eat the next day could be 600, it could be 1,000, it could be 1,200. The fat content just is just, it's just a guessing game because guys, no two cows are the same. So that was pretty much the cons. And the other cons I was facing this week, like being like lethargic, tired, snappy, like weak in the gym, I'm not really considering that a con to keto because that's me adjusting to keto itself. So that's not a con at all. That's just kind of like adjusting uh, through the process, like getting over the keto flu and stuff like that. So that was my cons. And my main takeaway this week is that I got to eat more fat. I got to focus more on higher cut fats and meat, having more whole eggs. Cause I'm a type of person that looks for low fat foods, fat free foods, and that's not necessarily the best way of doing things. So going forward, look for a more like even macronutrient split. So that is gonna wrap up this video guys. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So will you wanna be a bodybuilder?